The global Hyperloop network spans over 100,000 kilometers. The Hyperloop is the backbone of global society and commerce, carrying billions of passengers and goods daily between Europe, Asia, America, Africa, and Australia. It saves CO2 emissions, travel time, space, and investment costs. In doing so, it represents one of the largest transformations in history. The question is, how are we going to get there? We're now in Groningen, and that's where we're going to build our new test facility. To realize a Hyperloop, you need to prove your technology. First, high weight and see if the magnets, if the whole system works on a low speed, and then go up to high speeds. From there to there, 2.65 kilometers, 700 kilometers an hour. In the Netherlands, we are working hard in building the European Hyperloop Center, which is a collaboration of 21 partners to ensure that Hyperloop technology is a technology which is safe to travel and a technology that is uh, going to enable people to seamlessly travel across the continent. Public and private parties are collaboratively working on pieces of the puzzle that should lead to one standard so that an interpretable network is created, uninhibited by technical differences. Standardization, I think, is one of the most vital parts that we need to achieve given the fact that we are going to realize a cross-border transnational um, network. In order to realize the network, Hyperloop will have to grow from a starting point, an initial pilot route. We're looking currently at 18 uh, routes uh, in different continents. We see that uh, the challenges are vast. Uh, between Amsterdam and Rotterdam, there's a lot of traffic going back and forth, a lot of cargo traffic as well. So one of the first applications of Hyperloop, we see cargo as, as a really important way of, of starting a Hyperloop route. The Cargo Hyperloop Holland route in the Netherlands is already supported by 35 stakeholders, which includes provinces, municipalities, shippers, exporters, have joined to assess the potential of this route. These tubes, they have a very high capacity, the equivalent of 500 trucks per hour. If you extrapolate that to a whole day, you have the potential of replacing half of that truck traffic. That could maybe solve already a large part of our congestion problems. The Amsterdam-Rotterdam route is not the only one. Similar initiatives are being realized around the world. Over time, these routes will be interconnected and result in the creation of the global Hyperloop network. You see, it's abstraction for Hyperloop routes all over the globe, and that's a lot of governments already have the ambition to realize the first Hyperloop before 2030. As climate change or human stagnation are the only options with the limitations of our current technologies, we have to choose for Hyperloop. If we really want to keep our, our, our levels of welfare, then we have to do things dramatically differently. Uh, and not just, just incremental innovation. We need to have a revolution in transport. And I think that's what the power of Hyperloop could be, not just for long distances, but also for our daily lives, to really have it as a backbone uh, for intercity transport. <laughs>